Welcome back to another RC Worst video. And uh, we are today doing our final video in the uh, troubleshooting a water well system. Today we're going to take a look at troubleshooting the well uh, or the motor in the well. Uh, and you don't actually have to pull the motor out of the well in order to perform these tests. But this is going to give some good insight and uh, give you some visuals to kind of see what's going on. So I have over here uh, two bad motors and then I have over here two brand new fresh out of the box motors. So we're going to roll through those tests and kind of show you uh, some comparisons on how those, you know, how those test out and so forth. Uh, once again, I do have our uh, $18 meter. Before I get started on doing these tests, I want to remind everybody that the AIM manual, this is the... Uh, the holy grail of uh, submersible well testing and, and uh, testing of any of the components in your system. This is going to be in the description below. And uh, for these particular tests, you're going to be using page 13, 46, and 47 in this book. Um, so you can refer to those if you want to kind of follow along. We'll jump right into it. We'll start by testing out the new motors so that you're familiar with how it's supposed to look. And then we'll go into these uh, dead motors and kind of show you how those work. And, and then you'll be able to kind of tell the difference. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we've got a three wire motor here. This one over here is a two wire motor. Um, the first test that we're going to perform is going to be the insulation resistance test where we actually te test the, uh, the resistance inside the motor's insulation. So what we want to do is in this case we want to hook one of our leads to ground and I want to remind everybody for this test, now this meter actually isn't ideal for this test, but for this test I have the ohm meter set to the highest setting, the 2 million ohms. Um, and what we're looking for is, um, and there's a chart in that AIM manual that's going to actually tell you what we're looking for, but basically a number above 500,000 ohms, that's the threshold for pull it out and replace it. Um, now this meter is not ultra sensitive because it's a relatively inexpensive meter. So I went through all these tests before we filmed this and basically it reads infinity um, or one, as you can see here, um, when we don't have a short to ground. So that's essentially what we're testing for. So basically all we've got to do with this test is roll through these different uh, different leads. So we've got one hooked to the ground. Now if you were testing this at the well itself with the pump still down in the well, uh, you can hook your ground to either a ground if you've got one exposed like at a splice or something like that, or just hook it right to the well casing if you've got a, a metal well casing or um, you know, you're going to have to figure out something that's grounded to the well to, to hook that ground onto. But in this case, we're just going to hook it right to the ground and then we test this and um, we're going to see one on every one of these because once again, this meter is not ultra sensitive, but really it still accomplishes the goal of telling us if we have a short. So that's good. So I'm assuming that it showed you one. On all of those, I just rolled through. I hooked it to the black first, yellow, and then red. The order doesn't really matter. So this motor is good. Um, and we can do the same thing with the two-wire motor. It just has the two leads, so one to ground, and then uh, one to here, and we've got one again, and one to this one, and we've got one again on that one. So. Uh, obviously these are brand new motors just fresh out of the box so we're not going to find any problems with them but that's exactly what we're looking for. Now I'll, uh, I'll bring this motor over here. We've got this is a pretty old motor. It doesn't actually even have a ground. It just has three wires, black, white, or yellow, assumably, <laughs> and red. Um, so the way that you test an old motor to, that doesn't have a ground is, again, you can use the well casing, or in this case, since I have the motor right here, I'll have to use this meter and I'll touch it to the side of the uh, motor, and then I'll put the lead, the other clamp, on this side here and you're going to see definitely not a one. So um, when I touch this to it, that's indicating that we've got a short to ground. You can see that we're no longer in that high reading anymore. Uh, and that's going to generally read through, uh, or that's going to generally be the case on all of the different ones that you test because internally this is all connected um, without getting too in detail on how that works, but uh, they're all connected. So once you have a short to ground, you should be able to read it essentially on all of the leads in most cases, but not necessarily every case. 
but in this case I know that that we can see it on all three different ones so so that's how that one reacts compared to a brand new motor so it's it's definitely very clear even though this meter isn't really up to par to give you the exact reading uh, whereas a more expensive meter would be able to give you the exact reading and you could compare that with the chart and that would tell you essentially how far along this is right in my face <laughs> essentially how far along in the motor's life we are because over time through operation the windings slowly break down and and uh, then the shorts become more and more likely the reading that you can get with a higher end meter will give you more of an idea of how much life you have left on the motor whereas with this test and this inexpensive meter we're only really able to tell if the motor's totally fried essentially um, but still that's definitely useful information to know kind of handy dandy so we'll jump into the the ohm test across the windings real quickly here um, tighten these up so when it comes to testing uh, the ohm resistance uh, between the windings, we essentially don't need the ground for this test. And we've got the yellow, the black, and then the red. Uh, the yellow, that's your common uh, line, essentially. Um, black is going to be the main. So when the pump is up to speed or the motor's up to speed, uh, it's going to be relying on these two to power it. But on startup, that's where that start capacitor comes into play. We've got the red and that's where the start winding is. So the start winding is between red and yellow and then the main winding is between black and yellow. So keep that in mind. Now when we're talking about two wire motors, um, it's, it's just two wires. So uh, there's just those to test. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And let me just make sure my meter is set to the right setting here. The aim manual says to set it to R times one, um, but on this meter, again, it's not ultra sensitive. Um, that wasn't really giving me the numbers I was looking for. So we're gonna use the 200 ohm setting and uh, that's gonna give us exactly what we're looking for. So unfortunately, the 200 ohm setting on this meter is a bit noisy because if you have continuity, it squawks at you. So bear with me. I probably won't do a lot of talking while I'm actually uh, showing you what it what it reads. But so first off, let's just check the main or um, check yeah check the main winding. So we've got yellow and uh, black hooked up here. And on a let me unhook this real quick. On a one and a half horsepower motor, we're looking for a number between um, 1.7 and 2.1 on uh, on this motor. So. Uh, between 1.7 and 2.1. 2.1. So we've got that reading. So we're testing great there. Whew, that's noisy. Um, and now we'll take it off of the black and we got to keep the yellow hooked up and we go for the red. On this one, we're looking for between 7.5 and 9.2. So we'll hook this up, make sure it's good and tight on there. Again, 7.5 to 9.2. So we're clearly within that range. Now, uh, once again, I want to remind you, this is definitely a brand new motor. So um, we'll go ahead and test the two wire. So this one's a lot easier. You just hook it uh, one side to this side and one side to the other side. On two wire motors, you've got a different set of numbers to go off of. In this case, we're looking for a number between 1.5 and 2.1. So we'll hook that up. So we've clearly hit the 1.5 to 2.1. Um, incessant ringing that's terrible now those numbers are specific to horse and a half motors so don't assume that that's going to apply to any other horsepower that's just specific to these ones but um, so these are testing perfectly good on both tests and uh, that's really the only test that a person can perform on these motors to determine whether or not they're bad outside of uh, high amperage or something like that. But usually um, these tests are gonna ring, tr ring through on whether or not you've got a problem when it, when it really boils down to it. Uh, so as I mentioned with this motor is, once again, this is a horse and a half, three wire motor. And if you recall, um, black to yellow, we were looking for between uh, 1.7 and 2.1. Let's just see what we get. We're getting a pretty good read on that one. See, we've got 2.2, uh, 2.1. So it did hit the 2.1 on the main winding. Let's see how this does on the start winding. I'm getting all tangled up here. All right, so start winding. Let's see what we get. Oh, amazing. 
it's dead silent. We got infinity, so it's it's open there, meaning um, we don't have the resistance that we need. Uh, so this motor is bad. Now, I didn't really have to hold that up because you probably couldn't hear the squawking um, because there wasn't any. So that is where this motor's bad. Um, so we've basically walked you guys through uh, a motor that's shorted to ground. We've walked you through a motor that has failed the winding resistance test, meaning it's got a problem within the winding of the motor. Both of these motors are totaled. You would need to replace them if you get those readings. Um, if you get readings that are essentially outside of the range of the aim manual, then it could be an indication that you've got either a bad splice down the well if you haven't pulled the motor in the pump out of the well yet, or it could be that the motor itself has gone bad. So make sure that when you do pull it out of the ground, you perform these tests once again uh, in order to make sure that it is bad and that it wasn't just a splice or something that got waterlogged. Um, and also keep in mind when you are testing down the well, you have to take into account the voltage drop that occurs. And once again, I'll refer you back to the AIM manual that does have a chart in there. So if you know the depth of the well, you know the length of the wire essentially, and it's gonna give you an adjustment uh, on how much you would need to adjust each one of those readings. So keep that in mind, and uh, I hope that this video helped you, and we'll see you next time.